Bye. We're doing one right now about, it's like, man, have you ever seen someone who's in the online marketing space and they have such a sourpuss attitude that you just want to tell them to shut up and get off your timeline? I do. All the time. I don't like a negative attitude with people who are still kind of talking to beginners. It, it feels like sabotage. People need to quit doing that crap. I don't like it. A lot of the stuff that beginners are being taught and speaking as someone who is still a beginner, I have heard from other coaches who aren't complete nut jobs that a lot of the stuff that we're being taught is very out of date. Actually it goes back about 50, 55 years. And a lot of the habits that were being taught go back to the 90s. As a beginner, um, with only having done this for a year, I can now have a year's worth of time to reflect on the stuff that I've been taught. And here's a couple of things. One important one, in my first big course that I got on, we were not taught personal branding. They weren't teaching us how to market ourselves. They were teaching us how to market the course and to leverage the creator's name because we were nobodies and no one was going to listen to us. So we had to leverage his name and face in order to get anyone interested. The other thing that was not taught in that first biggie course was how to do research. And that is something that I keep seeing people on another platform say that you have to do market research, have to do market research. You know what they don't tell us? How to do it. And then the last thing they do is talk a lot of crap about people who are beginners as marketers is that we don't, they don't know anything. No one knows anything. It's like, yeah, it's because everyone who is calling themselves a coach and a mentor and a guru is not teaching us anything that we need to know. So go ahead and blame the beginners all you want. We'll be over here just talking crap about you. There is a skill involved with teaching people how to do something. If you're a coach or a mentor or a guru and you don't know how to teach what you're selling, just remove yourself from our presence. Please and thank you, because you're not helping anymore and we can see you. That said, here is something that I have been believing over the last little while, because I often hear conflicting advice of, research your market and don't make anything that the market doesn't want. Not every product on the market is designed to solve a problem. Some stuff is out there just for frivolous fun or to boost something that you're already doing. Nothing has to be that dire and serious, does it? Oh, I'm not, I'm not in that dire serious realm of marketers and business. Can you tell? I'm out here having fun with it, and fun is fun. The point of all this, here are three people who are very influential in the world who were creators. The first one is Quentin Tarantino. Apparently, the movies that he was making, he, he was making movies that if his, if he liked it and his friends wanted to see it, Let's invite everyone else and have a good time. The second person is Toni Morrison. And her quote is, if the book that you want to read isn't out there, then you have to write it. And the last person is Chris Cornell. He was interviewed in 1992 after a show. And the interviewer was just asking these dumb, dumb questions. And I could tell I'm a huge Chris Cornell fan. I could tell that he just was not into what the interviewer was saying. And the guy was like, your, your music's pretty loud, isn't it? And Chris Cornell's like, well, you didn't like it? And it's like, why is it so loud? And this is what this guy said. He goes, we just want to make some noise that maybe people haven't heard today. And I'm like, that hits, that tickles all my spots. And that was an interview that I saw in about 1992, 1993. And that is kind of how I have conducted my creator mentality since then, because it was brilliant. And these three people, we, we know who these people are. We know what they have contributed to entertainment and history, 
as far as their art is concerned. They are loved. They are known because they understood what creation actually is. You don't ask them, ask the market, what, what, kind of, what kind of books do you want, market? This is how you have superhero movies and prequels and sequels in every theater that people are often fond of saying, Hollywood is out of ideas. No one is listening to the market. They're foisting onto the market what they think they want, and the market just goes with it. And it's like, you don't like it, though. Why keep showing up for it? Why not create something that you want to see? Because there is going to be a demand for more heartfelt, heart-driven, authentic content, especially with AI threatening every creator out there. And if you're threatened by an AI, I'm one that you don't have to worry about. Bottom line with this video is create what you want. I saw a short for a guy who was, you, you've seen the dude who's like, what are you driving? When he goes up to someone and they're in like a $500,000 car, he went up to a dude and the dude tapped into the nostalgia factor and created little brightly colored rubber band animal bracelets that they didn't solve a problem. They were a fun thing and he made a ton of money with it. Good for him. I'm glad he was able to tap into something that people wanted slash needed. We're going to wrap this up by saying try not to listen too terribly much to people who are stuck in the past because they might mean well and they're trying to keep you from making mistakes, but making mistakes is how we learn and it's fine. Like, favorite, subscribe, tell a friend, bring a friend, tell a friend to create that thing. Someone out there wants it. Might be me. Okay, bye.